Our Farm Basics topic today is variable rate planting. We've talked a lot about planting on the show before, but how about if you want to plant different populations? You want more plants in certain areas of the field or less plants in certain areas of the field. How do you even do it? Well, you're pretty excited. We got a new planter for our I farm am. for next spring, and we're <laughs> actually going to be able to do it on our farm because we have been looking at it for quite a while. And when you think about it, as you roll across a field, the soil is different. You're going to go over some hills and you may have some clay hills or you may have some sandy hills. You get into some lower ground and it may be a little heavier ground. It's different out there in different parts of the field and if you're going to plant all those parts of the field the same and treat them all the same when the soils are completely different, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So variable rate seeding does seem like the way to go. Yes, but it still comes down to economics and quite frankly when corn was worth $1.50 and we were only getting 130, 150 bushel yields, there just weren't enough dollars there for it to be worth messing with. And what we always thought is, well, do we really even know what next year's gonna bring? Because let's say that I plant 30,000 corn plants per acre, that might be more than what we want in sandy soil, but it might not be quite as much as what we want in real heavy, good soil, highly fertile ground. But do we know what we're gonna get for rainfall? We might get 30 inches of rain, we might get 15 inches of rain. So that made a whole lot of difference. So we just kind of looked at it as, that's our way to basically hedge our risk. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we, but, but seriously, I mean, the economics play such a huge role in farming. You've got to take a look at that. Well, now that commodity prices are higher and we're getting higher yields, you know, now we want to manage things just a little bit differently and actually manage them a little better. Well, you know, for some of us, uh, we can manage things better than others. If you've got irrigation on your ground, you know exactly how much water you're going to get. You can play around with your rates on planting quite a bit because if you've got some variance out in that field, you can fine tune your program with variable rate seeding. So you've got exactly the right amount of plants out there to take maximum use of what you have available in the soil. So I wanna give you an example of the fields that we're gonna gain the most out of doing this variable rate planting. Fields that have sandbars running right through them and it's rented ground. It's not like we own the ground, it's rented ground. And we'll go along and we'll get tremendous yield, tremendous yield, and all of a sudden we hit those sandbars and the yield is like one third or less. A couple of years ago we got zero in those areas when it was really dry. So what we want to do is we'll be planting higher populations. When we hit those sandy spots we're going to cut our population way down. We'll put less fertilizer on there. We'll manage that area, that zone, just a little bit differently so we can maximize overall profitability on the farm and also maximize the grain that we're going to get. See what happens is if you put too many plants in an area that doesn't have much moisture or much fertility, then you produce nothing. But if we only plant a few plants out there, those plants can survive and put ears on so we can do a better job of overall crop production and produce more food for the U.S. We kind of need food nowadays, you know, they're talking about this food versus fuel thing. Yeah. As farmers, we want to raise more food and we can do it with variable rate planting. Doing variable rate seeding, you can save a lot of money, you can do a better job on the farm. It's a good deal all around. Yeah, so like Darren said, we did buy a new planter for this next spring. We're going to put some a new Case IH planter. We're going to put some ag leader units on there so we can control the rate of our seeding and plant higher populations where we need it, lower populations where we need it. It's going to be fun. Well, if you don't have this equipment, you could still do the same thing. You could get out make some adjustments on your planter. The problem is in the spring, everyone's in a hurry trying to get the crop in, and it is a little bit of work on most machines to, to make that change out there. With new high-tech equipment, it'll shift for you on the go. So as you're driving across the field, you've got the field mapped out, and you can change that variable seating. It's a good deal. Yeah, it's, and, it, and it's relatively simple. I wish it was that simple to control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 